Hey, slackers. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, so here we are. Uh, I don't even know what day it is that we've been out, but God, it's crazy, huh? Who would have thought it would go on for this long? Um, so since this is statistics, I can't ignore speaking about this with you because it is ridiculously applicable to our class about what's going on right now. Um, so they believe statisticians have gotten, um, have been on the briefings, which by the way, guys, I can't stress to you more. If you're interested in the stuff we do in class, if you're interested in this kind of math and if you're good at it, um, now more than ever, you see how, uh, how high in demand statisticians are. But if anybody watches the briefings, I don't care if it's with the president or with governor Cuomo, but specifically with governor Cuomo to the left of him at the end is a very young man. I think he has a beard. He's pretty young. He's got to be around my age or younger. He's a statistician, and he's the guy that is one of the leading experts that our governor, our politicians have on their um, task force. He's probably being paid a crazy amount of money right now, um, and he's doing something very uncomfortable, something in statistics that's against everything, statistically speaking, that we do. Um, I think I've told you guys before, the magic number in statistics is 10. We like to see... 10 days, 10 months, 10 years of data before we say there's a relationship, a conclusion, um, a correlation of some sort. So we don't have that right now because this thing hasn't even been around for more than what, six, seven months globally in the world. Um, basically, New York being the epicenter of this thing for our country, we have the most cases in the country. It seems like that's gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, you know, they were trying to follow models from other countries that were hard hit. So looking at the models of China, looking at the models of uh, Italy and Europe, the ones that had big numbers like New York specifically in the United States are having. They projected us to not hit the apex for seven to 30 days. Now, this is something I don't know if we're going to get to in this class because of how I'm teaching right now. But um, we, would talk, we would end the year talking about confidence intervals. Confidence intervals are very important statistics so basically you run your statistics you get your data you get your answers and then you want to be able to say with how much confidence those answers those conclusions are true okay or the relationships are true so there's the top confidence intervals are like 95 97 and 99 percent confidence obviously in order to publish something or to say something has a relationship you want to say you're 97 percent confident or 99 percent confident I know 95 sounds great, but now when you're talking about people's lives and life or death. So when you had that gap in numbers, seven to 30 days, we were going to reach the apex. And I was saying that about a week ago. That Those numbers, seven to 30 days, are based on the 97% confidence interval and the 99% confidence interval. I know I'm getting really dorky with you right now, but this is real stuff. And the graph, the models are a parabola that's a negative X squared because it's upside down. Now... We were projected to be in line with Italy, something I talked to you guys about the last week before school closed. Our numbers were matching day by day with Italy as far as increases were going. They projected us to really blow up here in the United States, specifically in New York. And they didn't think we were gonna hit our apex until the end of April. Um, we were gonna be closer to the 30 day mark. They were pretty confident on that one as far as the confidence intervals went. Cause I've been looking all this stuff cause I'm the dorky statistics teacher. So how do we change that? Um, the strict social distancing, shutting schools down, keeping them closed, really forcing people who are being adamant in not listening, which is very frustrating in this situation, um, for it by closing parks, closing beaches, things like that, because people are just not listening. They just don't get it. Those same people that don't get it, it's funny to me, are on social media still talking about how this is, you know, the media is blowing this up and blah, blah, blah. Um, and here we are. And then the, it's funny because like a week or two later, then they're posting somebody they love and adore has it and it's very sick. Um, not that I wish it on them, but it kind of, they don't get it until they have to get it, unfortunately. So with that being said, um, the strict rules they put in place is what's causing us to cut off that curve sooner, which is good. It's very good. The important thing is for you guys to remember, we have to continue doing this as hard as it is and as much as it sucks. Um, you know, stay home. You shouldn't be hanging out with each other. Be careful when you are out. You have to be out. Some of you are still working. 
Some of you work in grocery stores and things like that, or if you're going shopping or doing things, grocery shopping, limit the amount of times to do it. Don't touch your face while you're out. Wash your hands. I'm even going to the extreme, especially because I'm high risk, being pregnant and all. Uh, God, I, I come home and, well, my husband won't even let me in the grocery store anymore. Let's just put it that way. Um, but if I have to go to the doctors because I'm pregnant um, and go to labs and have tests done, um, I come home, I take off everything, change my clothes, take a shower, like the whole shenanigans. Um, we're being very, very careful. So I've been in touch with a lot of you. Most of you seem to be in the clear and, and being safe and you all seem to be taking this seriously. Some of you, some of your peers are directly impacted by this, which breaks my heart. Some of you have people in your family, friends that you know. Um, so just please, please, please pay attention. Now the apex that they're talking about means the apex is just where we max out. Um, and so far every country has had that. They max out until they get it under control. Now, they thought we were going to apex a lot later. It looks like we're doing it sooner. This is very uncomfortable for statisticians because they're predicting things day by day. Remember that magic number 10? They don't like doing that. They'd much rather wait for a month to pass and go, oh, yeah, we hit the apex at that time. Doing it live day by day is a very uncomfortable thing in statistics. We don't normally do that because data can go like this a little bit every once in a while. So they're not even sure if we're really in the apex. They think we are because for three days, three days, that's it. We've been pretty stagnant, flat consistent um they think with the models we're showing over the past three days and that's it just three days that we're gonna plateau there's two different type of apexes they go up they flatten out and then they come back down or they go up and then they just come back down um they think we're on the track of plateauing which means this could drag out the apex is the worst time for those of you who are following the numbers new york had the most deaths in one day yesterday over 700 deaths it's terrible absolutely terrible um, now I know a lot of you are saying, well, if we're getting, if we've maxed out, why are the deaths increasing? Well, those are the people in ICU that have been in ICU since last week and the week before. So unfortunately death is morbid as it is, is the end result. So those are the people who are the outcome, the conclusion of a week or two ago. So that's not from the last three days of data. So that's why you see like the flattening and then it starts to go down. Okay. So hopefully you guys are following this a little bit. Hopefully, because you're in statistics, um, you kind of understand it. Maybe when you're with family, friends, whatever, if you're talking about it or somebody's talking about it, you can explain it a little because you take college statistics. So hopefully that helps a little. Education is key, guys. Knowledge is power and spread it. All right, so now back to dorky math. Yay. How do we like these box, box plots, huh? They're pretty awesome, aren't they? Um, I like them. It's a nice break from everything we do. I think this is video lesson seven, right? Um, hopefully you guys were able to get on Meta Calc, Meta Statistics or Meta Calculator, I can't remember which one it is, and use that calculator. Um, I put it up on the assignments. I even put pictures on how to enter in the data. It kind of gives you everything you need for right now anyway. So hopefully that's helping you out to get your answers. So last time we met on video lesson six, I told you to do, I believe, 11 and 12 for homework. So for right now, let's start out looking at 13 and 14. Let's review a couple of box plots, and then we're gonna talk about a double box plot that you use for comparison. And that's really it, I'm gonna give you some homework, all right guys, so let's take a look. We have, ooh, look how exciting, state sites for Frog Watch. We have constructed box plot for these numbers of state sites for Frog Watch USA is the distribution symmetric. Isn't this funny? This is source data. People actually watch frogs. Okay, so anyway, um, you remember this textbook handout? I put it on the last assignment, page 167, for video lesson six. So we're still gonna use the same one. I think when I posted, I even wrote for video lessons six and seven. Okay, um, so we, if you had the graphing calculator, you would do stat edit and hit clear to disappear. You guys, if you're doing meta calculator, you just enter the numbers in and it gives you right away what you need. So let me enter these in real quick. It's not a lot of numbers. The noise you hear in the background for a change, I'm not recording in the middle of the night. Um, I'm actually doing it in the evening here before my daughter has to do her Zoom dance class. Yay. So if you hear my family, they're all chilling with daddy right now. 
421, 395, 314. I messed up on one of these. 294, 289, 242. That's a 238. I put in 23. 235 and 199. Okay, 10 numbers. So then we go stat, calc, one for fun. I want it in the L1 and I hit calculate and you scroll down. So if I draw the box plot, I need the what number summary. I have to write down the what. The five number summary or you're gonna lose points. Okay, so I'm gonna write down the min, Q1, the med, Q3, and the max. So here we go. Number 13. You hear the stupid cartoons I have to listen to all day? Guys, I listen to this 24 hours a day now. I'm going nuts. You think I needed psychological help before this in medication? Oh, my darlings. You ain't seen nothing yet. All right, so anyway, <laughs> here's my five number summary. If you look at the lowest number, it's 189. The highest number is 421. So I want to set up a number line now. To range from 189 to 421. I'm going to start with 100 and count by 50s. It seems like I do that a lot with these. That's not what you always have to do. You just have to pick something that covers all of your data. Okay? You put a box around Q1 and Q3. So 238. Label it Q1. Oh, I'm going to run into my numbers. That's okay. 314. Is this going to be like yours and It's Q3. It'll be mostly the same. And 271. And we didn't have you and Rosie to help out because you were even more. Is the mid. And the min is 199. And the max is 421. Now, I want you to be able to write a sentence on the shape of the distribution. You could talk about where the median is, or you can talk about the lines. Usually, they're kind of different. So I just have to look at your answers and decide which one you went with. So in this case, the line kind of looks near the center. Okay, if it's near the center, we say the data is symmetric. If the line to the right is longer, numbers to the right are positive, so we would say it's positively skewed. That's not really what happened with the line, but picture not drawn to scale. So I would accept either or. If you told me the shape of the data or the shape of the distribution is symmetric because the median is near the center of the box, you would get full credit. If you said the shape of the distribution is positively skewed because the right line is larger, you would also get full credit, okay? I usually go with the median. So, the shape of the distribution is symmetric since the median is near the center of the box. And there you go. Pretty easy peasy lemon squeezy, yeah? All right, number 14 on the textbook handout. We have median household incomes. Again, this is source. This is the amount of money when they say income that people actually take home, not what they make on salary. Usually income is about half what you get paid in salary. Um, Jim, she has a blue marker with no cap on it that she's walking around the room with. Sorry, guys. Um, construct a box plot and comment on the skewness of these data, which represent median household income in dollars for the top 10 educated cities based on the percent of the population with a college degree or higher. She's going to draw with that marker on something she shouldn't, and I don't think it's washable. You just got to take the marker away. All right, so I'm going to enter these numbers in. Stat, edit. Sorry, my darlings. My daughter is walking around with a marker that is not washable. I told him once, as you heard. And he is just sitting there anyway. I love him, though. I love him, though. Okay. I know you guys are all laughing right now. These are things I tell you about in class, and now you get to actually experience them in the Sakaro household. Kind of, sort of, in a way, right? 
All right, we have 10 numbers. We go stat calc, one for fun. Again, if you guys are using Meta Calculator, you just enter it in, you go down, you click on statistics and everything you need pops up. Scroll all the way down and let's write down my five number summary. Min, Q1 is the 25% of the data. The median is 50% of the data. Q3 is 75 and the max is 100%. Okay. So I'm gonna set it up on the bottom here. It looks like I'm going from 39,000 to 57,000. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at 38 and maybe count by twos. 38, 000, 40, 48, 50,000, 52,000, 54,000, 56,000, and 58,000. All right, so remember a box goes around Q1 and Q3 with a line down the middle for the median. So 42,000 in change is like here. If you hear Jimmy laughing, it's because Olivia cheats so bad when she plays board games. So she is in there cheating right now, I think. Is she cheating? Is she cheating? Is she doing the Olivia cheating MO? Uh-huh. Cheater, cheater. No. Yeah? She always cheats when you play games. Always. She's a master cheater, this child. She always has to win, so she just cheats. He got up to get a drink of water, and she cheated. Here's the med. And then I go with 39,000. And the max is 57,000 and change. So we'll go like here. There you go, my darlings. I'm gonna write my little sentence up here. So again, I usually use, now in this case, these match. So maybe I did a better job drawing it more to scale this time. If there's more space to the right of the median, what kind of numbers are to the right on a number line? positive so it's positively skewed if the right line is larger it's positive right positive numbers on the right so either way your answer would be the same here i usually say the median the shape of the distribution is positively skewed since the median is to the left of the center of the box. You could also say, since there's more space to the right of the median, I would accept that. Um, or you could say the shape of the distribution is positively skewed since the right line is larger. I would accept that. All right, my darlings. So that's reviewing box pots, just doing two more. So if you struggled a little bit on 11 and 12, hopefully if you watch this, it'll help you fix your mistakes. Um, but let's look at our notes packet. We have one last thing to discuss. So, example two. Let's do a double box pot. Let's get crazy, yo. Let's get wild. It's the last one. Okay, so I'm going to enter both numbers in. If you guys are doing meta calculator, you're gonna have to do them one at a time. So basically, I wanna compare the data for real cheese to a cheese substitute. Um, do you guys, when I was in college, this was a big thing. Easy cheese in the can that you spray. It's friggin' delicious. It's terrible for you. Um, but it was easy because when you were a freshman, you didn't really have a fridge in your dorm. Or maybe you did, but most people didn't. Um, or they didn't have a lot of room in their fridge. So their fridge was just like the basics, like milk and butter and drinks and stuff like that. So you didn't want to waste room with cheese. So real cheese is the actual cheese you buy cut up in a deli or things like that. All right, so they basically want a box plot comparing these two. So I need my min 
my quartile one, my med, my quartile three, and my max for real cheese. And then for the cheese substitute, and yes, you're going to label the five number summary for each of them. You're going to label the box plot for each of them. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat with the calculator here and put them both in at the same time. Okay, and then I'm gonna do them one at a time just to get my data. Okay, there we go. So you do them one at a time. So stack, calc, one for fun. I'm gonna do real cheese first, L1. Scroll all the way down, and there's my five number summary. So 40, 67.5, 200, 275, and 420. And then I'm gonna go and shoot out the other one. Stack, calc, one for fun, but I'm gonna change it to L2. You guys have it easier with the meta calculator thing. Scroll down, 130, 215. It's a lot less punching of buttons and keystrokes anyway. Okay, so they have to share the same number line. So the smallest, when I look at the mins, is over here at 40, because this one's 130. And the maximum looks like 420. That's the biggest. So I have to go from 40 to 420. So I'm actually going to, I'm gonna count by 50s like I normally do. I'm gonna do zero, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400, and 450. No, I'm gonna do real cheese first. So I'm gonna start it up here and then I'll do like real cheese up top and then cheese substitute underneath it. So I have to go box around Q1 and Q3. So 67.5 would be like here. Up, oh, I put it down. That's okay, I'm gonna label it. Um, and then 275 would be like here. And then the median is 200 right there and then we go to 40 and 420 all right and I'm gonna label this real cheese okay very important you do a labeling over here a box around Q1 and Q3 line down the middle for the median so I'm gonna go 215 to 300 Ooh, it's a lot closer together, this one. And the median is 265. And then I go down to 130. And up to 340. Okay, kind of interesting. Definitely very different. The real cheese, if you think about, if you think about variability, when we did measures of variation or spread, it's, is it more spread out or less spread out the numbers? Definitely more spread out. That's something we're definitely gonna mention because you have to compare and contrast. Similarly though, both their medians have more space to the right or to the left. They have more space to the left. What kind of numbers are on the left? Negative numbers, so we'd say it's negatively skewed, okay? So let's write this down somewhere. I'm actually gonna flip it over to write it down. Okay, so I have enough room. So I'm gonna write. I'm sorry. The shape of both distributions. They're fighting in their bedroom right now. The shape of both distributions are said to be negatively skewed. I think this is the first example you've seen that. Since both medians 
R to the right of the center of the box. Okay, and then we're gonna say something about the spread. The data for real cheese is said to be more variable or more spread out than that of the cheese substitute. Okay. All right, ladies and gents. So your homework for video lesson seven is going to be in the text handout that I put up for video lesson six, page 167. And I would like you to do one box plot, single data, number 15, talk about the shape of the data and compare to do a double box plot like we just did, number 16. So I want you to so just show you the textbook can out. Here's 15, single data with a sentence. The shape of the distribution is, tell me, is it symmetric, positively skewed and negatively skewed and why? And then for 16, you're doing a box plot for the US and a box plot for the South America, but on the same number line, you're gonna write a sentence about, is it the shape of each distribution? I wanna know the shape of US, I wanna know the shape of South America. So is it symmetric, positively skewed, or negatively skewed? And then say something about it. How is it spread out? Is one more spread out? Is one less spread out? Are they both pretty much spread out the same? Okay, that is the point of comparing data, comparison and contrast. All right, my darlings, be well, be safe, make good decisions, stay home, don't hang out as much as possible, wash your hands, and take care, brush your hair. Adios, amigos.